Good afternoon. We're going to go ahead and call the Senate Committee on Revenue and Economic Development to order. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Senator Buck? Here. Senator Donate? Here. Senator Severs Gansert? Here. Senator Spearman? Chair Neal? Thank you, Madam Secretary. Uh, please mark um, Spearman present as she arrives. Um, I wanted to do the work session first. I was waiting for her. So what I think I'm going to do is have the work session at the end. Um, we are going to hear two bills, and we're going to go out of order on the agenda. So we're going to actually do SB 126 first, and then we're going to do SB 95, and then I am going to turn over the committee to my vice chair, Senator Donati. Thank you so much. Uh, at this time, we will go ahead and open the hearing on Senate Bill 126. So uh, please proceed when you're ready. Thank you, uh, Senator Genyate. So SB 126 has a long history in this uh, building. The program is Nevada Grow. I had this bill in 2015, and it started out as a pilot program. And now here we are eight years later. Um, trying to continue to advance and fund um, Envy Grow. So when I started Envy Grow in 2015, I had this belief that I wanted to move this concept called economic gardening. And economic gardening what came from Littleton, Colorado, where they had started to um, be heavy on tax incentives and they decided that as a city that they wanted to focus on growing um, small businesses because they felt that that would be the economic engine in order to move their economy forward. So I met the actual person who um, created the program in 2011 and then I started to do my own little mini pilot in my district and trying to figure out how to assist people and then in 2015 we were able to pass the pilot. Then in 2017 we were able to make it permanent and then in 2019, uh, we have been continuing to come back to the legislature to continue the appropriation. I want to give a little bit of history as well on the appropriation because we have managed to come from 15 businesses to, I believe, 825, which the College of Southern Nevada will present that information. But what I want to help you understand is that when we started this process of Nevada Grow and how to grow, um, businesses from one stage to the next stage, we had $350,000 over two years. Then the next time we brought the appropriation, we had $425,000 over two years. And then the next time we brought the appropriation, we had $450,000 over two years. So each year we had $125,000, and that pretty much remained our appropriation um, until this bill. And so I feel that we have one, you will see that we have uh, established that we have been prudent and really, really good with money. Uh, we've managed to leverage um, the Envy Grow program with other federal grants. And I'm pretty proud of the vision and how this has kind of just came to fruition. Um, when we were going over all of the slides, I didn't realize, you know, eight years goes fast, but it's, it's one of those bills where if you just believe in the vision that you have for economic development, if you believe in your strategy for small businesses, it will actually come to fruition. Um, the bill basically allows us to add an additional chamber. It adds a higher appropriation, and it also um, provides more support um, with another partner, which would be Cooperative Extension. 
and that is in the amendment that you guys have and it also squares up some of the um, chamber allocations so I have that chamber allocation piece in the amendment because out of believe it or not out of that 450,000 we have been giving a $25,000 allocation to the chambers over two years to have a part-time person who would be the marketer of Envy Grow. And so the amendment shows that there is an increase of $5,000 um, for that, for those chambers and then the add-on of an additional chamber. And then the amendment also speaks to us bringing on a GIS person um, who will um, well, that's under cooperative extension, who will help us to scrub data, consistently train our current GIS person that we have or a new GIS person that we have, because data was one of the fundamental pieces of this bill. How you take data, move the needle for business, and then you add on other uh, technical support in order to advance what the business is doing and then prove that the support and the business support that you've given them change the dynamic, change their income, change their jobs um, for their business and then also put them in a different economic opportunity uh, level. So with that, I'm going to go down south and I'm going to introduce our vice president of the North Las Vegas campus, uh, Clarissa Cota, and I'm going to introduce our new um, director of Nevada Grow, who is Mr. Eric Gardner. Thank you very much, um, Senator Neal. Members of the committee, can you hear me? All right. Um, can you hear me up north? Yes. Okay, well, thank you. Um, so, we're gonna start off and our presentation should be pulled up in just a moment, we can't see it yet. And again, this is Eric Garner for the record. I am Interim Director of Small Business and Entrepreneurship Development. Vice Chair you can, Donate, you, you my can name proceed. is Clarissa Coda. Okay, thank you. So we can go to the next slide. So at the moment we see a black screen and there we go. So some of the strategic areas and what we do is, is we provide counselors, as we mentioned, in business strategy. And what those counselors are is those are individuals from the community who are bankers, who are um, accountants, who are real world professionals that work with our businesses to make sure that they're successful and they provide that mentorship. Another thing that stands out and makes Envy grow special and makes small businesses grow is our GIS specialist. That person helps to, to um, build capacity and growth and tell them about retail sectors that are best for their business. So that's the type of data that the GIS specialist provides. And then also we have our professors on campus who specialize in different areas like culinary and web design and business. And they also help out the small businesses. So that's what we do and what makes us special. Next slide, please. So if we could, once the next slide loads, we'd like to give you an opportunity to hear from some of our counselors and members of our staff. Um, if you click the space bar. My name is Gabriel Interante, and I support Nevada Grow because Nevada Grow speaks the language of small business. Hola, mi nombre es Idania Ramirez, y yo apoyo a Nevada Grow porque Nevada Grow habla el idioma de los pequeños negocios. Swati Hashan Chi, Patarnia Punsuan, La Shansan Absolut, Nevada Grow, Pawa, Nevada Grow, Poor Pasa, Kong Turakit, Kanaklek. Ampalan Ko, I am Mark de la Cruz. At sinasuportahan ko ang Envy Grow dahil ang Envy Grow ay nagsasalita ng wika ng mga maliliit na negosyo. No moe si K. Doxley. Moe si Porte Nevada Grow. Pasca Nevada Grow pali lagaj piti business. Envy Grow nun charun kiyobur chiwan hagi demne Envy Grow ga songjang palchon hasu isimida. Kamsamida. You can see from that video what makes us special is also our staff. 
And the fact that our staff are diverse, they speak multi, multi languages. And so we're able to provide our services to, to individuals in various communities. And as you can see from the images, those are some of the members of our staff. You may recognize some of those individuals. They are professionals out in the community who work with the businesses. So we're proud to have them all on our staff. Next slide, please. So in terms of metrics, since 2015, we've served 847 businesses to date, and that's as of February 2023. And those businesses come from various sectors. So we're glad that we're able to provide services to many different types of businesses, and we're always expanding that. Next slide, please. And if you look in terms of growth, you'll see that there's been Consistent growth, it kind of spiked up and down, but you'll notice that in 2021, there was a significant increase. And the reason for that was the pivot to online and for businesses that were doing e-commerce. We were able to help a lot of those businesses as they transitioned over to the digital world and they were able to provide services and, and we were able to help them to make that transition. So we're happy about that. But you see, there's also been growth this year in 2022. We're still adding, um, of course, this year is 2023, but in 2022, looking at that data, you see that our numbers increased by 183. Next slide, please. The next slide will show you year to year. As you can see, that growth has been fairly consistent. There was the spike, but even after the spike, we added a significant number of businesses to businesses that we served. Next slide, please. And so beyond providing a variety of services, adding different clients, you see that we have over half of the, and in terms of demographics, over half of the businesses we serve are women owned. Um, we have a variety of, of individuals that we help and we're always looking to expand out to different communities. So that's what we do. Um, next slide, please. And so again, I mentioned before how we pivoted to e-commerce and we were able to help those e-commerce businesses. So that's one of the main things that we do. We're able to provide that web support where they can learn about how to use a website, how to get that data, how to, how to track um, visits to their site. We actually had um, Ben Kang, he may be here today, as a member of our staff who, who helped businesses to develop a QR code that allowed those businesses to have digital menus. And that was something that was really needed during the pandemic. So we're, we're proud that we we're able to help with that service. Next slide, please. And so now I'm going to pass the presentation over to our Vice President of the North Las Vegas campus and let her introduce herself. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. And Vice Chair Donate and Chair Neal. My name is Clarissa Dakota, Vice President of the North Las Vegas campus for the College of Southern Nevada. I will be continuing the presentation. And so at this point in time, we don't see the slides down in the south. There we go. Thank you. So we have several testimonials directly from our businesses. For example, we have Monica Prado, who is the co-founder and content director for Quintales. Because of Nevada Grow, she was able to continue working on the creation of new bilingual stories for their reading platform. Next slide. We also hear from Milo Lopez, who was able to use the funds um, and it was prompted to do a nonprofit. And so with the help of Nevada Grow, she was able to achieve those goals. Next slide, please. We also have business owner, Sean Davis, the co-founder of Nude Mints. And thanks to Nevada Grow, it allowed them to go to the Sweet and Snacks Expo in Chicago. And now they are in a thousand stores with talks for another 2000. Incredible. Next slide. Our last testimonial here is from Kalia Wright, a social media and marketing expert. And because of Nevada Grow, it allowed her to hire new staff and hire coaches and consultants. And she was able to automate some areas of her business in social media and marketing services. Next slide. And you will hear later from Francisco Carbajal, co-founded Filoso Barber Brand. And thanks to Nevada Grow, they went from making $4,000 in January to making about $10,000 a month in August, all thanks to Nevada Grow's support. Next slide, please. To exemplify the diversity of the types of services that we can offer in Nevada Grow businesses, these are YouTube videos that our staff produces on behalf of the clients 
and they can then in turn use it for their own marketing um, efforts themselves. Next slide. So Nevada Grow is providing the right data to our clients so that they may make the right decisions and make the right connections so that their businesses continue to grow. Next slide. You might recognize or have frequented some of these businesses as well, just to give you an idea. These are just a sampling of many of our businesses. But rather than just seeing their names, why don't we go ahead and hear directly from our Nevada Grow clients? Next slide, please. And we help our small businesses grow, and you may advance to the next slide. I'm Akeem, also known as the Revive King, the owner of New Life Kick, and we bring dead sneakers back to life. My name is James Kirk. My company name is Boss Security Screens. We're headquartered here in Las Vegas, just on the corner of uh, 215 and Rainbow, and we serve all of Nevada and all of Arizona. We manufacture and sell and install security screens, which are designed to prevent break-ins. Hello, my name is Ava Musican, and I am the owner and founder of The Salt Room. Hello, my name is Tamara Gaboyan, and I'm Vice President of Operations here at The Salt Room. Our clients come here to heal the body, mind, and soul. They come here to get massages, facials, to get pampered. We also offer body treatments such as body scrubs and body wraps, holotherapy for allergies. My name is George Martinez. I am the owner of Raging Tacos Food Truck here in Las Vegas, Nevada. So Raging Tacos was a concept that started by me and my business partner, Diego. We wanted to add something to the food truck scene here in Las Vegas. Uh, and what I mean by that is we wanted to give off a, a different vibe to our customers. We wanted to be that one approachable, young, hip, uh, Mexican food truck here in Las Vegas. Some of the most authentic ones are not necessarily some of the most approachable ones. We want it to be the food truck that you can you know, walk up to and feel comfortable. You know the guys in there are having a good, a good time just as much as you are. Uh, so yeah, I think that's what kind of you know, sets us apart a little bit. And uh, we got together for the love of food and for the love of uh, the experience when it comes to culinary. My name is Elena Ledoux. I'm the CEO and the owner of Superb Mates. I was born in Soviet Union and I went to economics school there, graduated from college and immigrated to US and went to law school. The services we provide is actually uh, cleaning homes. And I always say we clean homes with uh, love and intelligence. And the best way to explain it, I tell my employees, uh, you go in and you clean the house like you would your grandma's house. My name is Tyler Gasson, the owner, uh, creator, the brand manager of the Gas Station Recording Studio. During college, I was studying uh, music technology, and so I took all the courses there while I was on football scholarship. I just had a great year, uh, a great four years there at UNLV, and I got a chance to go and play professionally. So from there, I went undrafted to the San Diego Chargers, and then after camp, I was uh, cut, and it was at that point I just realized, like, yo, I don't really love this as much as I do other things, and that other thing, those other things that I spoke about, um, was music. Hi, my name is Kenny Chow. I'm an owner of Tyler Express Body Shop and Auto Repair. I learned about car from my parents, from my country, and from the school in America. We take care of the customer like us family, and we work the best for them. That's why they come back to us. You never pay too much for all the job we work on it. We use quality parts. Our employee, they well trained and they happy with their job. We appreciate our support from Nevada Grove. In the future, I hope I will open 10 more locations. All the customers will happy. Thank you, next slide. So success stories such as that from our business owners, and we have so many more, really is why we work so hard every single day. I hope you could see how we're helping to raise communities and families through our work and through Nevada Grow. As Senator Neal had mentioned, uh, we were able over the last couple years to leverage several uh, federal grants and also uh, philanthropic gifts to help to support our efforts with Nevada Grow. One such program was the federal grant of the Sandy Fund 
that help to support the venture funding to help support our businesses. Sandy is the supporting and advancing Nevada's dislocated individuals grant that is amongst the community colleges within the state of Nevada. Next slide. Through the Sandy grant and the Inventure Fund, we have now been able to fund 27 businesses, um, most Nevada Grow clients, at about $495,000 in grants, and we have about $150,000 left uh, before the grant expires in September of 2023. Next slide, please. Another program that Nevada Grow was selected for was the Technical and Economic Assistance Program with Clark County, where Nevada Grow is the subject matter experts and we will be receiving referrals uh, from the lead service providers to assist uh, their clients, which will then in turn become Nevada Grow clients um, with anything that they may need based upon uh, their business resiliency plan, such as help with their marketing, their pricing, web design, licensing, video creation, because we're drawing from the large network of our staff members and their expertise to help these clients. Next slide, please. Another federal grant that we had received from the U.S. Department of Commerce had been our Minority Business Development Agency grant. And through those, uh, those grants, which we had received in, in uh, September of 2020, and then it, it has, uh, uh, the grant has run its cycle as of June of 22. Through the MBDA grant, we were able to support and create a podcast, which is called the Business Information Buffet, or affectionately called the BIB Podcast. Uh, and we were able to produce the shows. We have about 60 episodes that we have and all available for viewing, which features our Nevada Grow clients and partners as success stories. It also helped to ad advance marketing and uh, all the, also other workshops. The BID podcast, uh, we are now using the BID podcast to support our other partnerships, such as Blackstone Launchpad, to be producing uh, new episodes. Next slide. One final um, program that we are now part of is the Blackstone Charitable Foundation's Launchpad, and we are probably three, one of three community colleges within a 50 um, higher education institution network supported by Blackstone Launchpad to support entrepreneurship, uh, business pitch uh, creation, connection to college campuses. And through the Blackstone Launchpad partnership, we've been able to help our Nevada grow uh, clients by also launching this center. And if you can look at the next slide, please, we're going to now start offering workshops that will be very beneficial to our Nevada grow clients. For example, we're going to be doing a soft opening this month and offering media training, e-commerce, and photography business skills. Next slide. A point of pride that we have is that through the Blackstone Launchpad, we were able to compete in a national comp pitch competition last April, April of 22. And today you will hear from uh, the owners of New Life Kicks we are so proud of them. Uh, they became uh, the national winners of the pitch competition. And uh, what's remarkable is you might hear of the other institutions that came in second, which was Cornell University. Next slide, please. So to exemplify how we are able to support each and every one of our Nevada Grow clients, in this slide, you will see that we have our business owners um, from New Life Kicks and exemplifying that not only are they receiving the Nevada Grow core services, but we've been able to surround them with the other um, services such as the networking, the business pitch sessions, the peer mentoring that is so important. Um, our professors uh, also assist at the college to help to make uh, not only New Life Kicks successful, but also the new uh, Nevada Grow clients. Next slide. Nevada Grow is foundational to our efforts at the Colleges in the Southern Nevada and our Small Business and Entrepreneurship Development Unit. Um, so if you keep pressing and advancing, 
we help to leverage other grants that we may be eligible to be applying for to also leverage the foundational um, grant and uh, opportunity through Nevada Grow. So under this umbrella, we have our Go In Project Sandy, the T Project, and Blackstone Launchpad. Final slide. We could not do this without the help of our partners. We are very uh, proud to say that Nevada Grow is a good partner to the ecosystem of, of those that are assisting small businesses across the state. Nevada Grow, we, we keep in contact with all of our partners and our interest is not to duplicate what we do, but actually leverage and have this extended network that can only help to lift our Nevada Grow clients. Next slide. At this point, we've concluded our presentation and I will pass this back over to Senator Neal. Thank you, uh, VP Coda. Um, I apologize for the sound. I hate horrible presentations, but the rest of it, I mean, was awesome except for the sound. Um, I'm super proud of this program and I think it's super important. Senator Neal, just quick pause. Um, if the audience members from Las Vegas can turn off their mic. There you go. All right. Thank you. Uh, so I'm super proud of this program because a lot of conversation has been around small business development, but it has not been around how do you continue to build the ecosystem and the partnerships that we have managed to keep since the inception. If you look at the data um, in 2015 and 2017, when you saw those low numbers in the chart, we were in a period of transition, meaning I had passed the statute and there was a disinterested party who was a director and then in 2017, I pretty much stepped in and took it over. And Kevin Rayford um, was our lead counselor at that time and I, I took my pilot program and I took the vision and the steps that I believed were going to make a good program. And our team came together along with Ricardo Villalobos, who um, now is at Workforce Connections, and we sat at the table quarterly with the partners and we went over step by step of what I expected the implementation to be. And here we are eight years later with a new program director with VP Coda sitting at the table with a whole new set of uh, businesses and now um, with adding an, an additional chamber, the African chamber, and then in addition adding the cooperative extension, who initially was a part of the program, but there were a period of years where we just didn't engage them, but now they're going to be back at the table and they're going to share in the counseling and provide some additional um, course support. The Entrepreneurship Center, as you saw, it is, a classroom that we are going to develop. And with this additional funding, um, we will be able to do so much more and leverage so much more because I can tell you this, every dime, every dime, every penny is accounted for through this program. And we show proof of concept. Every time we step out into the space, we show proof of concept for every piece of the program that we decide to do. And I'm proud that I have the team down there and the businesses who will come up and support because um, they will come and support testimony. And I just want to mention one thing. So the hair, the hair store that you saw in the woman, it's a random meet. Uh, her name is Candy. And I happened to walk into her business and she lives in my district. Well, her business is in my district. And she, was, she just said, she said, you know what? She knew me. And she was like, hey, are you, are you Assemblywoman Neal? Because at the time I was in the assembly and I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and she was just like, I think God must have sent you to me because I have been um, funding my business with a credit card. And I have this predatory rate and I cannot continue to make these payments. And I, at the time, I called Kevin Rayford and I said, I met this business that we need to intervene with immediately because 
she has put her, she also had a um, loan on her house. And I said, we're running the risk that not only will she lose her business, but she's going to lose her home. And um, I said, there is no way that we should ever do this kind of financing for a small business because I don't believe in um, uh, actually putting a second loan on your house when we have so many dollars running through the state and we have the expertise in order to figure out how to examine your financial situation to make the business decisions that you have made appropriate for your growth. And because we intervened, um, Candy was still able to maintain her business, maintain her flow of products coming into her business because she had an outflow of at least five grand a month. Then she had her mortgage. Then she had the credit card payment. Then she had this secondary loan on her house, and she was scared. And um, that's the power of Envy Grow because at the Latin Chamber, the Urban Chamber, Henderson Chamber, Asian Development Council, um, we have been able to put these tentacles into various communities and offer them support while they're either in their micro stage, which is how we advance, or at the second stage and the next level that they needed to get to. And I'm just super proud that the legislature, year over year, has allowed me to invest um, general fund into this program because we do the work and we do it well, I believe. And so with that, I will turn it over to questions on the bill. Thank you so much, Senator Neal. Um, I was fortunate to see former classmates in the video, so I'm glad to see that their businesses have taken off. Um, at this time, we will go ahead and let committee members ask any questions that they may have. Uh, Senator Sievers Gainser. Um, thank you, Chair, and thanks for bringing the bill today. And I know your program's been highly successful, so thank you for that. So when, when I'm looking at the bill, you now are putting um, the division shall, to the extent practicable, ensure that the work of the lead counsel of the program is supervised by at least two employees of the division. So I'm looking at Section 1, Subsection, yeah, 3A. So I, I wasn't sure why. Um, so that's one question. And then the other one is around B, having the Nevada Small Business Development Center train in, in geographic information. Why, you know, anyway, yeah, thanks. Uh, thank you for the question, Senator Dina Neal. So the reason why um, I put in um, Section 3A is because in our transition and in our process of growing uh, over 2022, um, how can I say this politically correct? Because I'm not politically correct. Um, we had to transition from one director to who we currently have, Mr. Garner. And the reason why I put this in here is because for the future, I wanted to make sure that oversight was always there, that there was a sense of um, community, a sense of that you are not doing this on your own. It was always a team concept. It remained a team concept. Um, and it was very important that for the future that I wanted to put in that language that basically there was going to be oversight of the counselor no matter what happened, no matter how much money comes through our doors, that we were, we were, that it's not up for debate that oversight exists. The second part in B is every, I don't, you probably know uh, Brian Bonifant, who initially when I had this bill in 2015, he was a part of the program. And he hadn't participated in the past few years. And so I'm writing him back into the program because he is a master GIS specialist, and we need his expertise to train. We need his expertise to um, come down to the South and to take on some of our young um, GIS trainees who need to know what he knows, and that's why that's there. Th thank you. I, I guess I just was wondering because they're, you're putting it in statute versus sort of management policy. Um, and then 
Brian Bonifant is with the Nevada Small Business Development Center now, but I, I don't know if that'll always happen, you know, and so I would imagine um, just requiring that in statutes a little different versus working it out through your management if things change. And th Senator Neal, for the record, and, and I understand where you're going, and I appreciate that. It, it, and I think it's because eight years, right, you watch the growth of the program, and then you see that what you say was supposed to happen not happen, right? And so, and I know that he's going to retire soon. He's told me that <laughs> eventually he's going to fly the coop. Um, but I... Um, I have it in here because he should have been a part in 2017, 2018, 2019, and there, and he wasn't. And I want to make sure that he is now. And then, um, if I, you know, bring the bill again in in 2025, then after his work is done, I'll remove it out. But I just want to make sure that that opportunity is not ignored, and that he is a part of the process. Thank you. And then just last question, just to follow up on that. So is the funding, the $2.1 million, going to cover the cost of any consulting or any work that folks do re related to the changes? Senator Dina Neal, for the record, and in the amendment, um, that funding is striked down to nine fifty dollars a year, um, $950K a year. So yes. So currently, um, we have consultants that are on board with us, and I'll let... Um, VP Coda or Eric Gardner break down each uh, consultant that we have. And so, because we do have certain contracts with some of the work. So, like for our accountant, there's a contract. Um, we tried to bring on an IP um, attorney. That contract did not move forward because we didn't have um, the capacity nor the funding to do it. But I'll let them speak to that. VP Coda. Thank you, uh, Senator Neal, and to Senator Gansert. Uh, yes, so when you saw the staff that we had uh, had on our slides, we do have uh, independent contractors that we employ uh, to provide those uh, targeted on a project basis uh, work with our clients. So, for example, Petrania Botswana is someone who works with our clients to provide PR and uh, media um, work with our clients. Uh, we have individuals such as Ben Kang, who we can uh, bring on board when one of our clients and business clients need help with their web design. Um, he can provide very advanced web design services um, based on the needs of the uh, client. Another example is we have Ms. Lydia High. She is also an independent contractor that we bring on as needed for our clients' purposes, and she can provide some initial accounting services uh, for our uh, clients. So again, uh, we have quite a few staff members, but um, as Senator Neal had expressed, uh, we do bring them on as independent contractors on project uh, basis. Thank you so much. Any other questions from committee members? Senator Buck. I just have a quick comment. I appreciate all the hard work that you do and everything that this has, you know, led into and all the businesses that you've helped um, in your work. How, I guess, how can you um, scale this to maybe a high school um, Senator Dina Neal, for the record. We entertained that actually in uh, 2019, um, and we were we were looking at student entrepreneurship, and that's a little bit harder to do. Um, we actually had at the time there was a CCSD employee that was very much interested in trying to build that connect. Um, and I think as we were discussing that, there were several other grants that popped into the table. Um, and so there were other opportunities that kind of shifted our focus. I think that's probably in our future. We, we do student competition now at the college level, but not at the high school level. So that pitch competition also was something that went for college students where they could come in and do a business plan competition. And that was allowed because of the Blackstone grant that we were able to leverage with the existing 450000 
that we had in MB Grow. And so because we had that infrastructure already, we could um, position ourselves to um, engage. We're not giving up on grants, right? But not a lot of grants drop out of the space that allow us to do what we did during COVID or prior, right, right before COVID. Um, COVID had, a, I think, had a way of, I think, blessing a lot of uh, business programs because the um, federal government was focused on uh, sustaining groups. But I think that's in our future. I think you give us a couple of years, we're probably going to come back to that. I'm always coming up with some bright idea that I want to implement. And, uh, and I think Mr. Gardner, is, uh, he's very open to my ideas. And so we we'll look forward to that in the future. He's a business owner himself. He's not saying what, what his background is, but he is actually a business owner himself who has taken on this additional role um, to support us. Thank you so much, uh, Chair Neal. Uh, I don't think we have any other questions, so we'll go ahead and move on to testimony in support of Senate Bill 126. Um, so as a reminder, for folks in the audience that would like to testify, please limit your comments to two minutes each. Uh, we'll start off first in Carson City, then we'll go to Las Vegas, and then virtually. So um, we ask that folks be respective of the two minutes, and we will cut you off if you go past it. and if you have additional testimony, you can always send it to our committee staff. So uh, please proceed. Thank you, Vice Chair Donate and members of the committee. For the record, my name is Dylan Keith on behalf of the Vegas Chamber. It is our pleasure to come back once again and, see po and support the program of Nevada Grow. It has a longstanding history since the sponsor has brought it forward and we thank her for bringing it forward again. The return on investment dollars is impressive. Uh, it is a model example of a program that is successful, working, and putting businesses on the right track, as well as help helping so many small businesses, uh, which are the backbone of our economy. On behalf of the Vegas Chamber, we strongly support this bill, and we uh, kindly ask that you do as well. Thank you so much. My name is George Ross, G-E-O-R-G-E-R-O-S-S, with Carrera Nevada on behalf of the Nevada Bankers Association. We feel this has been a very effective program, as you can see from the presentation, and we believe that this bill will make an even better program, and so we urge your support. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else in Carson City? We don't have any. We'll go to Las Vegas. Hello, how are you doing? My name is Francisco Carball. I'm one of the recipients of the NV Grow funding. And uh, as mentioned earlier, we went from 4,000 to making $10,000 uh, in quite a short period of time. And I'm happy to say that uh, my wife, we're expecting a child and uh, she's gonna be a full stay at home, a mom, and uh, she's gonna be our full-time employee. And I think that's a direct correlation to NV Grow. So I, I fully support it and I hope that you guys do too. Hi, my name is Kim Jung Ho. I, uh, we are recipient of the NV Grow, and I was able to help the Vietnamese uh, business, small business community. Um, the first first grant that we feel included because a lot of Vietnamese people don't speak English, and we have the Vietnamese represent uh, inside NV Grow and. And they help us a lot, just the first time. And uh, I support the view. Hello, my name is uh, Keen Manafawashi. I'm the uh, owner and founder of New Life Kicks. Um, I support this bill. Um, Nevada Grow has helped us uh, tremendously. Uh, being a young entrepreneur, not necessarily having the roadmap or the blueprint to build a good, successful business, Nevada Grow helps cultivate uh, healthy business development practices, provides mentorship and opportunities for business to streamline their growth. Um, they've helped us grow our business from 2021 to now over 200% and helped us expand our e-commerce platform um, and develop it to be able to now globally supply um, the world with our most advanced sneaker care uh, products. Um, they've also um, supported us in just mentorship, uh, building uh, systems to help sustain the growth, uh, financial mentorship and uh, access um, uh, to capital uh, as well. So um, 
strongly support Nevada Grow in the bill. Oh, yes. And uh, they provided they provide us a lot of opportunity. I could sit here and talk for hours. But uh, Nevada Grow also uh, offered us the um, presented the opportunity for us to participate in a pitch competition. And we beat out 130 universities to take first place um, at the uh, Blackstone uh, pitch competition. So um, that provided, um, you know, just truly grateful for, uh, you know, the opportunities um, for growth that Nevada Grow has provided for us. Good afternoon, my name is Alex Vasquez and I'm on the Executive Board of the Latin Chamber of Commerce. And I'm here representing the LCC and full supporters of SB 126 and the incredible program called NV Grow. Because of this program, NV Grow, the LCC has been able to help hundreds of small businesses. The importance of real hard data for a small business can be the difference between success and failure. For that reason, the LCC is proud to support NV Grow and any additional funding. Thank you very much. Uh, buenas tardes, good evening. My name is Carlos Gomez. I am Vice President of the Latin Chamber of Commerce. And I'm the person of the boots on the ground. So I know this program and I know how many businesses are, has been successful. In this program, we refer to the agro, all the small businesses, Spanish speaking especially, in the ecosystems that Nevada Growth provides is excellent and it's a, it's a program that really we had full support for it, and we hope everything is coming together in Nevada Grow is the best program we had in Southern Nevada. Thank you. Good afternoon to the committee. Thank you for Senator Neal for bringing this bill forward. Um, thank you for having me a part of the team. My name is Jaron Gray, spelled J-A-R-R-O-N, last name G-R-A-Y. I represent the Urban Chamber. I serve as the board of the Urban Chamber. I'm just glad to be here today. Um, I want to reiterate the fact that this is an important program because we would, we as a chamber would not be able to accomplish the mission that we have without programs like this. Our reach is much longer and what we're able to accomplish is much bigger by partnering with programs like NV Grow. So we represent over 300 active members. We represent um, businesses in many different inter industries, including information technology, construction and trades, food and hospitality. We offer many different programs uh, related to things that they do and also give them many benefits, including ex exclusive marketing opportunities, networking opportunities, business referral opportunities. But all that being said, we're only able to do as much as we do because of programs like Envy Grow. So we've been a big proponent of the program for many Many years. Um, we've stood tall with the Envy Grow program and they reiterate the program that we have, right? We have many solopreneurs um, in our community and our mission is to grow them from solopreneurs, um, expand them to grow to the point where they're hiring people, um, gainfully employing them um, and bringing them to the point where they can actually expand and grow. And I love the term that we talked about um, from Colorado with the organic growth program that they have. Um, and we, we try to reiterate that as well. So we as a chamber from the Urban Chamber um, adamantly um, support this bill for uh, Senate Bill 126. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, uh, members of the committee. My name is Joe Cato, and I am appearing today on behalf of the African Chamber of Commerce and Tourism. Uh, we're a four-year organization, and thank you, uh, Senator Neal, for including us, uh, the chamber, in uh, this um, with the Nevada Grow Opportunity we are a relatively new chamber with over 700 members, and our membership base is made up of, strict, of predominantly immigrants from Africa and the Caribbean, as well as uh, African-American businesses here based in Las Vegas. The Nevada Grow program is very vital, and that gives entrepreneur access to business. And being a part of the Nevada Grow program, we can see where this, this group of um, uh, businesses in the community that have not, not often have the opportunity to participate in program will have the opportunity to participate in programs such as the Nevada Grow program. So we are thankful that we were included in this year's um, submission for the bill, and it is our hope that the program that our inclusion, our name inclusion with the corporate extension, that we will get the necessary approvals for this bill because it's a great program. I have sat on the sidelines. I've been members of other chambers, and I've also participated in the program myself from the 
the very beginning. So I know how good the program is for to stimulate a uh, small business economy and to stimulate Nevada for it to grow. Thank you so much for having me here today. For And I am in support of SB 126. Thank you. Hello, my name is Miriam Lopez, go by Milo. I am the floral architect of Milo Floor Design Studio and founder of Land to Land, which uh, foundation organization for refugees from Eastern countries coming to, trying to come to the United States in a refugee program. We have developed a program that actually co corresponds with um, the hospitality department and be able to help those that are coming to the United States not come through as refugees, but also to come as a work visa. With that, and we grow has helped us, um, and we have been able to establish a good status in employing and help, um, getting students from UNLV to also sustain us and the support as we work in the hospitality program and work the organization. Um, because of that, we're also able to partner up with the legal team, and I very support this um, this bill, and I'm very grateful for the MB Grow program. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Mr. Vice Chair. And to all the senators, and of course to uh, my friend Senator Neal. Uh, my, my name is Lawrence Weekly. I am with the College of Southern Nevada. I serve as the Chief Diversity Officer and Chief of Staff to President Federico Saragossa. Um, I come before you today to offer my support for Senate Bill 126 and say what a blessing it has been to so many businesses here. When you look at the uh, diversity of um, how this, this uh, particular uh, bill and this the resources that have been provided to a number of these small businesses, it has truly made a true difference. I've always been one of those proponents that said that America stands on the shoulders of small businesses. And with the support that you all have been able to provide over the years, um, it will continue to do the great work um, that you all um, have been voted to go to Carson City to do. And so I humbly and sincerely thank each and every one of you and ask you for your support here today. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Thank you, Senator Dill. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, is there anyone else in Las Vegas at this time? BPS, let's go to the phones. If you would like to testify in support of SB 126, please press star nine to take your place in the queue. Good afternoon, Chair Neal, Vice Chair Donate, and members of the committee. Thanks for the opportunity to testify in support of Senate Bill 126 and the proposed revised provisions. For the record, I am Nick Steele, Executive Director of Access Community Capital, and I serve as a commissioner on the Economic Development Subcommittee on the Nevada Commission on Minority Affairs. Access Community Capital provides guidance and funding to small businesses and mentors, entrepreneurs throughout the state of Nevada. Often our work overlaps with the goals and programming of business support organizations such as NV Grow. We agree with Chair Neal, Vice President Coda, and Director Gardner regarding the general benefits afforded to business owners through the NV Grow program. The staff at Access Community Capital has on many occasions received referrals from and referred businesses to Nevada Grow. We make those referrals with a high level of comfort, knowing that the services being provided are high quality, timely, and will ultimately place the businesses in a better position. As a mentor of several business owners and a lender to small businesses, I have firsthand knowledge of the challenges that our small businesses are facing. The NV Grow program is expertly positioned to help address the needs of the small business community and in a manner that is specific to their core competencies without much overlap with other organizations, providing more generalized technical assistance. The aspect of the NV Grow program that stands out is their ability to demonstrate tangible results and benefits for their business clients. Whether it's generating marketing collateral, bolstering their social media presence, or making capital introductions, Envy Grow has an in-house team providing services in a convenient and expedient manner. The program is grounded in using data to measure results, but more importantly, the program is centered on providing assistance for each individual business client, servicing their respective needs. Individualized support services are the critical missing link that Envy Grow provides, and this is the key to the long-term success of many business owners. We again offer our support for Senate Bill 126 and thank the committee's time and, and thank the committee's time and consideration.
Chair, there are no additional callers at this time. Thank you so much. We're going to go on and move to anyone in opposition to this bill. Uh, there's no one in Carson City, anyone in Las Vegas, and BPS, is there anyone virtually? If you would like to testify in opposition to Senate Bill 126, please press star 9 to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no additional callers wishing to provide testimony at this time. Thank you so much. And last but not least, is there anyone in Carson City that would like to testify in neutral on Senate Bill 126? Darrell Brown, non-paid veteran lobbies. Just a quick comment. It's very pleasing to see Senator Neal that Nevada Grows tracks veteran-owned businesses in your system. I think that's... Terrific. Thank you very much for doing Thank you so much. Is there anyone else in Carson City that would like to provide neutral testimony? We don't have anyone. Anyone in Las Vegas? And BPS, is there anyone virtually? Chair, there are no additional callers wishing to provide testimony at this time. Thank you so much. Chair Neal, did you have any closing remarks? Thank you, uh, Vice Chair Demyate. I want to thank all the businesses that came out um, today to testify on this bill. I also CSN staff, um, Chief Weekly. Um, before he was Chief Weekly, he was Commissioner Weekly, and he always used to let me get on the radio show <laughs> and talk about it be grow. And so I'm super grateful for all of the support that I've gained over um, all of these years. And hopefully um, this w the committee will see the wisdom to uh, let this bill out of the committee to go right into Senate finance. Uh, <laughs> so thank you for the hearing today. Thank you so much. Uh, at this time, I will go ahead and close the hearing on Senate Bill 126, and we'll hand the gavel back to Chair Neal. All right, so we are going to go ahead and open up for our work session on SB 50, and then I'll do the second bill after that. So, uh, Mr. Tower. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Christian Tower, um, Fiscal Analysis Division for the record. The work session document is available for the general public on NETUS. Paper copies are also available here in the room. Um, Senate Bill 50 was sponsored by this committee on behalf of the Department of Taxation. It was heard on February 14th, 2023 by this committee. Senate Bill 50 revised provision, provisions governing the sales tax holiday for certain members of the Nevada National Guard and certain relatives of such members. The bill is to ensure compliance with the streamlined sales, sales and use tax agreement of which the state of Nevada is a member. Senate Bill 50 revises the process through which members of the Nevada National Guard who are on active status and who are residents in the state and certain relatives of such members of the Nevada National Guard can claim an exemption from sales and use taxes on purchases that occur on the date on which Nevada Day is observed or the immediately following Saturday or Sunday. Under current law, the claims process requires a respective eligible Nevada National Guard member or his or her relative to claim the exemption via letter issued by the Department of Taxation upon purchase. Under Senate Bill 50, the process uh, requires the respective eligible member of the National Guard or, and his or her relatives to pay the full amount upon purchase to the retailer um, and submit a request for refund to the Department of Taxation after the purchase. There's an amendment to this bill uh, submitted by the Department of Taxation. And the proposed amendment eliminates the requirement in the original bill 
for an eligible member of the Nevada National Guard or his or her relative to provide a letter of exemption to a retailer upon the purchase of a personal ten of, of, of an item um, to, for which the member or his or her relatives will claim the tax exemption from the department. And uh, that closes the presentation of the work session document. Thank you. Thank you for that. Members, are there any co comments on the work session document? Uh, Senator Spearman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just want to commend those who worked on the um, amendment uh, to take the burden off of the uh, military member. Um, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, so that wasn't a question. That was a statement. <laughs> I was just like, okay. All right. So I will then entertain a motion um, to amend and do pass SB 50. I have a first from Senator Nyate, a second from Senator Spearman. Um, are there any additional comments on the motion? Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Or is there anyone opposed? Seeing none, the motion passes um, for the amendment to pass, and I will assign the floor statement to Senator Spearman. <laughs> okay, so that ends our work session for SB 50, and now we will move to SB 95, and I will turn the gavel back over to Senator Gemiati. Thank you so much, Chair Neal, for the second time. Uh, I will go ahead and open the hearing on Senate Bill 95. So please proceed when you are ready. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Vice Chair Danyate. I am here to present SB 95. Um, SB 95 came from the Interim Revenue Committee uh, where we had a conversation about um, how to fund uh, children's mental health, which was popping up um, while we were in the interim. And so the committee uh, uh, voted unanimously to move policy to take other tobacco uh, products and to um, roughly take 1.6 million a year in order to um, fund children's mental health. Why this was discussed, why this was brought up, was because the ARPA money that had been given to the state for um, children's mental health um, was roughly 1.6 million for the Northern Nevada Adolescent Services, and it was for the Southern Nevada Child and Adolescent Services, it was 2.413. Knowing that this ARPA money was going to eventually evaporate by 26, the plan was to uh, bring a bill that would allow 1.6 million to accrue up until up until 2026, so that any ARPA funding that was being used there wouldn't be a loss or a gap in that funding. And so the plan was, how can we? make sure that any services that were adopted um, in FY22 for 23-24 um, would then accrue so that um, the money would be there. Because I didn't want the conversation to happen where it was like, well, we did all these services and we had plugged in the $1.6 million to do this in the north, to do X in the south, and now that revenue is not there. And so I saw it as a savings plan that was going to start early, that was going to accrue $1.6 million every year in order to make sure that when the money dropped out, there would be money there and we wouldn't have to then have a conversation about how to fill a hole. That was essentially the intent of SB 95. Um, there is a chart, and I will let Mr. Nakamoto uh, break down or um, how we arrived at my 5% because I'm always trying to be creative. 
Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. For the record, Michael Nakamoto, uh, Chief Principal Deputy Fiscal Analyst with the Fiscal Analysis Division. Um, when the Revenue Joint Interim Standing Committee was meeting um, toward the end, uh, the chair of that committee, um, Senator Neal, uh, brought forward um, an idea and was looking for various options um, to go through. And um, the there's a table in Nellis that is available for the members that kind of outlined where some options were in terms of where the actual collections were for the, uh, the other tobacco products tax. And so the $1.6 million that you'll see in the bill um, more or less um, lines up with the 5% uh, column based on the actual collections for FY 2021. Uh, when uh, the senator uh, requested this information, we did not have the full collections for FY22 yet. Uh, we were still, I believe, at 11 months, uh, as you can see on this chart. And so the actual collections uh, for FY22 were higher. Um, so the actual revenue that would be or would have come from this tax in FY, um, based on the FY22 actual would actually reduce it to uh, somewhere below 5%. Um, and then the forecast going forward uh, for FY23, 24, and 25 would also be below that 5% threshold. But uh, that really is an overview of the, the 1.6 million. It was an approximation of about 5% of this uh, revenue source uh, based on the actual collections uh, for FY21. Thank you, Mr. Nah. Oh, sorry. I feel like I'm still chair. So, thank you, Mr. Nakamoto, for that breakdown of the chart. The bill's, uh, I won't say it's simple, but it's one page. So I will open myself up for questions from the committee. Thank you so much, Chair Neal. Any members with questions? Uh, Senator Severs Gensert. Um, thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. So my question is, so it sounds like you were trying to target 5% of the revenue that was being created and was going to be deposited into the general fund. And then so that you, you went with 1.6 and then you've got 2% CPI or, no, excuse me, 2% or the greater of 2% or the, or, or the greater of uh, the five-year average of CPI. So, so, right, so you're inflating it. Did you think about just doing like 5% of the dollars um, with a minimum of 1.6, or because there's calculations involved, um, and so it would, it would rise with the revenue, and then a floor too. Just sort of a thought. I I didn't I did I considered um, making sure that the revenue was going to maintain itself um, and then be able to grow. Um, the biggest concern that I had was. Um, you know, when I put it in the general fund, the earmark of it, right? Um, but ultimately, children's mental health was such a big conversation um, during the interim. And when I realized that we were plugging some of the dollars with ARPA, I, I wanted to make sure that we had a, I guess, 5% increment that would grow with inflation, and then it would continue to be sustainable. My biggest choice in trying to figure out the math on it was how can I make sure that it's going to be there, right? You can't say you're going to plug a hole and then all of a sudden there isn't a mechanism in place that allows it to remain at the level that you need it to be. Um, and that was the that was my largest concern. I'm always thinking about, okay, well, how will it look in 26? How will it look in 27? And that's why we put the buffer. I call it a buffer, but in Michael's. Mr. Nakamoto's land, it's an inflationary um, measure that protects. <laughs> uh, thank you. And I think everybody uh, recognizes the importance of children's mental health and making sure we get funding to that. So thank you. Thank you so, thank you so much. Anyone else? We don't have any more questions so we will go ahead and move on to testimony in support so if anyone here in Carson City is in support of Senate Bill 95 uh, please proceed to the table don't have anyone in Las Vegas uh, BPS is there anyone virtually in, in support of Senate Bill 95 chair there are no callers at this time thank you so much is there anyone in opposition to Senate Bill 95 
We don't have anyone here in Carson or in Las Vegas, so uh, BPS, is there anyone virtually? Chair, there are no callers wishing to provide testimony at this time. And last but not least, is there anyone in neutral for Senate Bill 95? We don't have anyone here or in Las Vegas. VPS, is there anyone virtually? Chair, the lines are open and working. There are no additional callers at this time. Thank you so much. Uh, Chair, did you have any closing remarks? Yeah. <laughs> Closing remarks. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair Demyate. So I, I just I just want to say this. Um, the interim committee reviewed this policy. It is up to you guys to review this policy and then examine whether or not, in your wisdom, um, you're going to um, let this move forward. I know there's a lot of people who are looking for revenue streams, but I wanted to at least have the bill hearing because it's always, to me, important for legislative history so you can understand um, how a particular mechanism was created. So when you think about in the future, you know, how I'm going to fund something, how I'm going to sustain something, um, you now have a chart that will help you to think through that policy. And so um, I will go ahead and say that I was thinking about a savings plan, I was thinking about the future, and thank you, uh, committee, for hearing both of my bills today. Thank you so much, Chair Neal. At this time, we will go ahead and close the hearing on Senate Bill 95. And once again, I will turn over the gavel back to Chair Neal. Uh, all right, so we will go ahead and open up for public comment. Is anyone in the room for public comment in Carson City? Seeing none, is anyone, I don't see anyone in Vegas. Is anyone on the phone, BPS, for public comment? Chair, the lines are open and working. There are no additional callers at this time. Thank you for that. And so we will go ahead and adjourn the Committee on Revenue and Economic Development.